The tragedy of your times, my young friends, is that you may get exactly what you want. That is a line from the monkey's movie Head, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. And it has to do with today's subject, so let's get into it. All right, before I get into it, though, I've been putting segments up from my talk on February 6th with Stephen Batchelor on my YouTube channel, which you can find, and I just put the second segment up today, so you can look at that. Also, on Sunday, uh, February 21st at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 a.m. Central Time, I think that's right, I will be speaking at Cedar Rapids Zen Center. You have to email them for the info on how to join their Zoom, but it's a Zoom thing and anybody can join, so email them and see what I have to say on Sunday morning really early. All right, so I got a, some friends who are into the Law of Attraction. Okay, now... I had a conversation the other day with these friends and they were asking me certain ideas uh, that they got from the law of attraction and asking me what the Buddhist opinion or what my opinion as a Buddhist was about this stuff. And I didn't really answer. And the reason I didn't answer is, have you ever been in one of these conversations where you realize the you're not going to be able to make much of a point anyway, because it's not really the type of conversation where people are going to be devoted to actually listening to the answer? And I thought the only answer I could give to the questions they were putting to me was a kind of answer that required some elaboration. It couldn't just be like, I think it's bunk, or, you know, which is not what I would say. Uh, or, you know, I think it's great. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's more nuanced than that. So, I'm going to try to do it in that video, and I don't know if these people are going to watch the video or not, and I hope they're not offended if they are, because it's not meant to be offensive. It's just meant to be kind of a detailed explanation of the answer to this question. Okay, so, the question, as I remember it, was that they put forth this statement from the law of attraction that everything you want is already yours and you just have to eliminate the thoughts that you can't have that thing and that these things exist in your vortex or the vortex and I looked up the vortex <laughs> so I wanted to find out what that meant and this is from the uh, I believe the same uh, source that they're getting their version of law of attraction from a vortex is a vibrational state of being that is a precursor of all positive motion forward of all that is. It's like encapsulated, condensed, straight up source, with source with a capital S. It's pure positive energy. It's the holding tank. It's the anchor. It's the touchstone. It's the place where all dreams and wishes and hopes are held until we find vibrational alignment with them. It is the eternal pool of well-being to which each of us have added mightily along the path of our physical experience. The reason you want to be in the vortex is because it feels good. Now that's reason enough since it's the basis of all desires. The only reason we ever want anything is because we think having being or doing it will make us feel good slash better. Being in the vortex means you're experiencing the kind of alignment that fosters magic and miracles. It's where you get inspired answers to your questions. It's where things come together beautifully. It's where you feel on top of the world. Now, what would Buddhism have to say to that? Well, I don't know if I'm the font of all Buddhism. You know, there's plenty of people on the comments section of this video channel who will tell you that I am absolutely not uh, uh, somebody who knows much about Buddhism and just a charlatan, whatever. You know, I get those comments all the time. They're very amusing. But I have studied Buddhism for most of my life, uh, well over 30 years, probably pretty much over 35. It's probably closing in on 40 years now that I've been uh, looking into this Buddhism thing. So I, I have a little bit of knowledge about Buddhism, I think, and I've been practicing for, for all that time, too, so, you know, I, I got something on the ball there, but I wouldn't say, like, I'm the, the final word on all that is Buddhism. But here's what it goes, Buddhism according to Brad goes. Now, everything you want is already yours uh, is, it's a funny statement in Buddhist terms because everything is already yours, whether you want it or not, and going further than that, everything is already you. You and the things you want are not different things. That is basic Buddhist philosophy. So there's nothing, there's nothing standing between you and what you want. It's all yours. Um, but you, this you, can't have it all. 
that's kind of the the dichotomy we have and that's where desire comes in and desire is you know part of the picture here the four noble truths as they are usually stated, and my teacher Nishijima Roshi had a beef with this, but let's just go with the usual version for, for now because it will help make the point. All life is suffering. That's number one. The cause of suffering is desire. Three, when you eliminate desire, you eliminate suffering. And four is the Eightfold Noble Path, Noble Eightfold Path, which I did a whole series of videos on uh, when it was still hot outside. So if you want to go back through this YouTube channel and watch those, you can. But there's the Eightfold Path of eliminating desire and uh, eliminating suffering thereby. Now, I won't go into Nishima Roshi's version of the Four Noble Truths because it's a bit different, but for now this version will serve our purposes. The question for me is, is satisfying a desire always the best thing? Because every desire comes with a hidden cost. That's been my experience. It's not that I think that following, you know, these kind of the secret methods will not work. I know there's a lot of people who, who would say that. Uh, my beef with it is it, it might work. And my experience with doing meditation, and this is something that's hard to talk about, so I'll probably not make much sense, is your ability to satisfy your own desires becomes very keen <laughs> becomes you get you can satisfy your own desires a lot better if you learn to do a meditation practice and that's one of the dangers of it and that's one of the things a lot of people don't understand about meditation and i think and i've been writing a whole book in which i try to make this point and this is the book i've been working on when i'm not doing these videos is the reason that the Buddhist path emphasizes ethics so much. You know, it's the Noble Eightfold Path is basically a path of ethics. The reason we emphasize ethics so much is because you're going to go on this journey into meditation. Meditation makes you a bit powerful. And I, I, they don't like saying this, and I don't even like saying this, because people will hear this and go, oh boy, I want power, I'm going to start meditating. And that's kind of what happened with the samurai in Japan, in the medieval uh, times in Japan. They understood that meditation, specifically Zen meditation, could make them very powerful as warriors. And it did, and they were able to satisfy a lot of desires, and they did a lot of violence, and they, they did a lot of generally not nice things uh, and and they use the Zen meditation practice to enable them to do these not nice things even more efficiently that's the danger because they ignored the ethical aspects of the Zen path and concentrated specifically on how the meditation practice could enable them to fulfill their desires but is fulfilling your desires always a good thing that's my question I have found in this path that whenever I fulfill one of my desires, something comes back to bite me. And the bigger the desire, the bigger the thing that comes back to bite me. One little quote I found that uh, has helped me is on page 87 of I Am That by Nisargadatta Maharaj. And I know it's outside of the Buddhist path, but I, I really like this book. Uh, he says, Weak desires can be removed by introspection and meditation. I would say that's true in my, in my experience. Strong, deep-rooted desires must be fulfilled and their fruits, sweet or bitter, tasted. That's the danger of desires, because the, the desire always comes with a fruit, and it may be a bitter fruit, uh, even though it might taste sweet at the beginning. And that's been a lot of my experience around this. I'd like to give you some quotes uh, I found from Kodo Sawaki Roshi, who was uh, the teacher of my uh, ordaining teacher, Nishijima Roshi. And here's some things he says about desires, because I, I, like, uh, I like what he says. A person with big desire is easily fooled. Even the greatest con man can't profit from a person with no desires. Though people say Sawaki has very few desires, in fact, that is not true. It is only that I persevere. If I give in to my deep desires, I will hurt the Buddha, so I simply endure. That's all. So he just has his desires and lets them be. Because I have so many desires, I understand the deep desires of others. It's stupid not to realize the depth of one's desires. That's why I don't try to deny the fact. 
My desires follow a curve. They can be intense. While I have these intense desires, they lead me to the Buddha way. Therefore, the more intense the desire, the better. When my desires wane, so does my energy. So my ability to resist grows when my desires increase. That's the importance of our lives coming together with the Buddha way. Another quote. Every cell in the human body has the raw ingredients for worldly desires. So the problem is how we handle these desires. Though the flesh body is a burden, it is meaningless to squander it. Then you won't be able to practice sazen. You won't be able to rein in this burden in order to carefully handle it so that you have fulfilled your highest potential. Then you won't have converted these worldly desires into fine examples of bodhi or wisdom. So that's how you do it, by fulfilling your higher potential. Though we all have various worldly desires, we can eliminate their burdens by the way we deal with them in our hearts. And here's another one. Isn't it self-evident? How could that which is eternal and infinite ever satisfy human desires? And here's a, a poem he wrote, which probably sounds better in Japanese. Doing zazen calmly in the dojo, putting aside all negative thoughts, obtaining nothing but a mind without desire, this is joy beyond paradise. And that's really it. Uh, so there may be methods which one can use to identify and satisfy one's desires and, you know, get all the things you want and make your wishes come true. <laughs> I am sure that is possible, and uh, the problem is I'm not sure that's what I want to do with my life. Now, what I'd rather do with my life is find a way to kind of control desire and not let desire lead me in uh, directions that maybe I don't want to go. Another little thing that sort of occurred to me, and... I'm not great at following this, but this is something that occurred to me and it might be useful to you. I was eating a bag of chips, probably Doritos, because I like Doritos. Uh, probably taco flavored Doritos, because taco flavor is the best flavor of Doritos. Don't get nacho cheese or Cool Ridge. Taco flavor, really. It's a retro flavor. It's the best one. Anyway, favorite flavor of Doritos. So I'm eating a Dorito and I realized that what I was doing was I was having a pleasant experience, the one Dorito, and then I was trying to repeat that pleasant experience again and again and again and again. Uh, when you're eating real food, you know, you're probably best not to think of it that way because you need a certain amount of nutrition to get your body going. But if you're eating a snack like Doritos, it's just repeating a pleasant experience again and again and again. You only really need one Dorito. I'm not good at following that advice myself uh, because uh, sometimes I eat a lot of Doritos. But when you realize that and apply it to other things that you desire, you can have a kind of more comfortable life and to the extent that I have been able to do that I have been able to have a more comfortable easier life and a more enjoyable life than I would if I ate a Dorito after a Dorito after a Dorito. if I satisfied a desire and satisfied again and again and again and again and again you just need to do it once Anyway, that's my message. That's what I feel about the law of attraction and the vortex and desires. If you want to donate to me being able to say more things about vortexes and desires and whatever, you can donate uh, by following this URL that you're seeing on your screen, hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is my only way of making a living. That's all I got right now. So I really thank you for supporting me with your kind donations. But if you are having financial trouble, don't donate to me. Never donate to me if you're having financial trouble because I'm doing all right. Things are copacetic. I can buy Doritos. I can buy dog food. It's good. But the reason I can do that is because people do donate. And I thank you for donating. See you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye.